Hi everyone, I'm Christopher from the Siemens Product Innovation Lab here in Munich. Um, together with Toby and our little friend Cardbot Henry to talk about our new research article in the California Management Review. We've developed an intuitive framework that extends the concept of open innovation. But first, let's talk about open innovation in general. In 2003, Henry published a book called Open Innovation, the new imperative for creating and profiting from technology. Fast forward to today, and a quick Google search for open innovation returns over a billion page links. And on LinkedIn, there are hundreds of thousands of people with job descriptions related somehow to open innovation. Open innovation covers a wide range of topics, including open source, crowdsourcing, IP licensing, university collaborations, startup engagements, corporate venture capital, supply-driven innovation, and user innovation, just to name a few. All of these processes involve the flow of innovation across organizational boundaries. However, there are two main challenges that large firms face when engaging in open innovation. The first is managing the associated organizational change internally. And the second is managing external relationships with innovation sources. These challenges don't fit perfectly within the traditional open innovation framework, which still focuses on outside-in and inside-out knowledge flows. In response, we developed an extended framework to guide open innovation entities in overcoming the most pressing barriers and increase their innovation effectiveness. And to understand our extended model, let's start with the traditional open innovation funnel. In this model, the walls of the product development or the innovation funnel are permeable allowing knowledge to flow across the boundaries between the inside and outside of the organization. And this offers the opportunity to manage outside-in knowledge flows, such as when big corporations partner with a startup and bring startups innovation inside the corporate boundaries. It also allows for inside-out knowledge flows, such as when established firms license their IP to the outside world or spin off corporate ventures. However, the reality for CBC unit looks different. There are many internal boundaries that prevents them to be effective. A more complete understanding of CBC and of course its successful implementation requires an understanding of its role in increasing the permeability of internal knowledge boundaries, allowing for inside in knowledge flows from CBC units to another corporate or to another business unit. Additionally, some of the most prominent current concepts about innovation management, such as ecosystems, they are driven by knowledge flows that don't fit within the traditional open innovation model. These include outside-out knowledge flows, which connect startups to each other and to important customers or complementary, uh, complementary partners outside of the firm's internal boundaries. And based on this, updated view of the Open Innovation Funnel, we can introduce our new framework. On the supply side, we look at the origin of knowledge and distinguish between knowledge that originates inside or outside of the corporate boundaries. On the demand side, we look at where knowledge is being applied, either inside or outside of the corporate boundaries. And through our research, we uncover some practices of CVC units that manage knowledge within and across internal and external boundaries. And these include leveraging outside-in and inside-out knowledge flows, as well as outside-out and inside-in knowledge flows to drive innovation and of course increase their effectiveness. The traditional knowledge flow that CVC focuses on is known as outside-in. This is already well known and involves, for instance, accelerating the market through investment in companies, projects, or ecosystems. CVC also works to establish collaborations between business and ventures, helping to close this kind of innovation gap. In addition, CVC fosters and surrogates M&A incorporating external knowledge to support these transactions. CVC's role then shifts to inside-out, 
where the focus is on creating investable assets by, for example, validating if it makes sense to spin off a corporate venture. CVC also evaluates internal knowledge and invests in corporate spin-offs. Finally, of course, CVC serves as a mentor to corporate ventures, providing access to investors and customers, and of course, sharing industry expertise to support the entrepreneurs. Overall, CVC's mandate is to support and accelerate innovation by bridging the gap between internal and external knowledge. By investing in companies and providing mentorship and expertise, CVC helps to create a thriving market for innovative ideas. Now, let's examine the newly introduced knowledge flows. In Outside Out Knowledge Flows, CVC acts as an ecosystem enricher and shaper, focusing on the orchestration of external knowledge across various boundaries. This involves, for instance, curating businesses. Here, SAP IO, BASF Venture Capital or Hitachi Ventures, they all create exclusive workshops, events or even platforms for matching external partners to enhance both customer service and startup support. Another practice is to promote ecosystems, which we saw, for instance, at Hyundai Cradle and their involvement in H2 Mobility. Here, the CVC promotes working groups or ecosystems in order to accelerate the potential market's infrastructure. Another practice is validating pre-due diligence. For example, in the case of an anonymized CVC, we look at in the paper, a customer of the corporate mother planned to do a proof of concept with a startup the CVC actually wanted to invest in. And to do so, the CVC leveraged the relationship of the mothership with the client to incorporate the results of that POC prior to a real due diligence. And of course, this saved time and money. Another practice is sharing deal flow. And Intel Capital, for example, highlighted the importance of sharing interesting ventures with other CVC or VCs. This is part of the VC game and it follows kind of a pay it forward principle. And now let's look at the insight in knowledge flow, where CVC can be seen as a cross silo knowledge broker. Here the focus is on the connection of internal knowledge across the internal knowledge boundaries. One practice, for example, is what we call venture-informed decision-making. Many of the CVCs we investigated, they were curating and sharing their external venture knowledge to guide the corporate executive's strategic decision-making. BSF, Venture Capital for instance, is regularly invited to corporate strategy meetings and they should share their venture insights that kind of ultimately inform corporate strategy. Another practice from BASF Venture Capital is the so-called reciprocal exchange, where CVC managers talk to experts from the business units. They ultimately invested in a company that was recommended by someone from the corporate parent, and they would have missed this kind of opportunity otherwise. Last but not least, CVCs can inspire entrepreneurs. For example, Hitachi Ventures established a residency program in which corporate employees have the opportunity to be mentored by CVC employees and work on real-world valuations and applications within this kind of venture world. And this obviously ultimately fosters the entrepreneurial spirit of that mothership. So to summarize, our new framework for open innovation offers a novel approach that can be easily adopted by CVC or open innovation managers. By mapping their activities onto our two by two metrics and identifying their gaps, managers can develop a strategic orientation that is tailored to exactly their needs. The 13 actionable practices we just provided can give you guidance on how to implement new knowledge flows and overcome barriers to increase innovation effectiveness. Overall, this framework offers a valuable tool for companies looking to improve their innovation processes. And as academics, 
may be aware, open innovation has been defined by Henry Jespero and Marcel Bogas uh, in 2014, where they describe it as a distributed innovation process based on purposefully managed knowledge flows across organizational boundaries using pecuniary and non-pecuniary mechanisms in line with the organization's business model. Our extended framework for open innovation builds upon this definition by including inter and intra-organizational boundaries, as of course demonstrated in our updated Open Innovation Fund. We hope our presentation has been informative and we encourage you to read our full paper, so please feel free to contact us with any questions.